Hello everyone, this is Nick Raptor here, and we are now on the third week of Die November. This is a continuation of my previous two Die November videos. If you haven't watched it, go ahead. And as usual, we are following the same list by Puko on Instagram. We got plenty of new dinos to draw and even some non-dinosaur creatures as well. So let's get to it. Enjoy the video. <laughs> The first dinosaur is the Mononychus. Mononychus was a small theropod that lived in Mongolia during the late Cretaceous period about 17 million years ago. The name translates to one claw due to its forelimbs only having one claw. This claw was most likely used in foraging termite mounts or insect colonies as they are insectivores, meaning that their diet consists primarily of insects. I guess you could say its diet is quite Bazaar. Damn bro, you got the whole squad laughing. Sorry for the poor pun. Anyways, Mononychus can measure up to 3.9 feet long and can weigh up to 3.5 kilograms and had a shaggy feathering covering his whole body. Their feathering helps keep them warm at night, deter scents away from their skin, and use for display to attract females. Now for my Mononychus, I gave it a similar shaggy featherings and made it more bird-like. The inspiration for this was from the Mononychus that appeared in the Prehistoric Planets documentary and the design of that Mononychus was based on a barn owl which I thought was very cool but I didn't want to copy it so I went with a different bird, one called a desert sparrow and it came out pretty well but anyways, here is my Mononychus. The next dinosaur is a Neurotenic Spinosaurus, which just like the Omniraptor from the last video, is not a real dinosaur. It is based on a real Spinosaurus, but it is significantly different. The Neurotenic Spinosaurus is a dinosaur from the same game as the Omniraptor called the Isle. Now in that game, the Neurotenic Spinosaurus is based on an actual Spinosaurus but it has a skeletal appearance with jet black skin and a slightly paler underbelly and has many veins and dots of bioluminescence across its body and it's said to have a telekinesis power and radiates an electromagnetic field from its spine. That just seems too much. But to me, it looks like if a xenomorph infected a Spinosaurus and created an alien Spinosaurus hybrid, which does look pretty cool. But for my Spinosaurus, I decided to go half and half, based it on both the actual Spinosaurus and the IO version. So I gave my Spinosaurus a body structure similar to that of the real animal, as well as an accurate head and an accurate tail. And due to recent discoveries, we found out that the Spinosaurus tail is large and pedal-like, similar to that of an axolotl. But then I changed its sail to a skeletal form similar to the one in the IO game and gave its body some bioluminescence. And I gotta say, it looks pretty cool, if I do say so myself. So here is my Neurotenic Spinosaurus. The next one is a non-dinosaur reptile called a Nothosaurus. Nothosaurus was an ancient marine reptile that lived in the Triassic period around 240 to 210 million years ago, and its fossils were found in North Africa, Europe, and China, and its name translates to false lizard. Nothosaurus was a semi-aquatic animal which probably had a lifestyle similar to that of today's seal. It was about 13 feet long with long webbed toes and possibly a fin on its tail. When swimming, Nathosaurus would use its tail, legs, and webbed feet to propel and steer itself through the water. The skull was broad and flat with long jaws, lined with needle-sharp teeth which it uses to catch fish and other marine creatures. They are one of the apex predators of the Triassic Seas. 
Now for my Nothosaurus, there's not really much to say about it other than I just went to look up at fossil reference and do my best to make an up-to-date version of Nothosaurus. And just like with the Liopleurodon from the last video, I gave it an undersea background with sun rays shining true and creates a wavy lighting effect on its back, which is one of the reasons why I enjoy doing sea creatures because of how it looks. But anyways, here is my Nothosaurus. The next dinosaur on our list is Eutyrannus. Eutyrannus was a medium-sized theropod that lived during the early Cretaceous period in what is now China at around 125 million years ago. The name translates to Feathered Tyrant due to the discovery of it having feathers covering all over the creature's body and it being in the Tyrannosaurid family, the same family as the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. They can grow up to 29 and a half feet long and can weigh up to over 3,000 pounds. The feathers on New Tyranna seem to serve the purpose of regulating its body temperature given the cooler climate in the Yixian area, the place where it was discovered. For my New Tyrannus, I gave it feathering throughout its whole body and gave it large display feathers at the end of its tail, just like how I gave my Mononychus large feathers on its tail. The inspiration for this look was based on the Jurassic World Evolutions 2 uh, Eutyrannus. And by the way, if you guys want me to play that game, let me know. And I decided to give it a white coloring with some dark stripes to give it a look of a winter dinosaur, since it would have likely snowed in the area Eutyrannus lived in due to the colder climate. And now, here is my Eutyrannus. The next dinosaur is the Kentrosaurus. Kentrosaurus was a small stegosaurid dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period in what is now Tanzania at around 152 million years ago. The name Kentrosaurus translates to prickle lizard due to the number of spikes around its tail. It has dorsal plates from its neck to its back similar to their larger cousins, the stegosaurus but from their hip to the end of their tail, they have large bony spikes. They also have spikes on their shoulders as well. Kentrosaurus can measure up to 13 or 15 feet long and can weigh up to 3,500 pounds. They use their large spikes as a way to defend themselves against their predators as their large spikes when swung with full strength can be very lethal. For my Kentrosaurus, I gave it coloring similar to the Kentrosaurus from the Netflix show, Camp Cretaceous, and when drawing this, I almost forgot to add spikes on their shoulder, so I added those in after recording, and it came out very well. I don't really have much to say, but hope you guys enjoy my Kentrosaurus. The next one on our list is another non-dinosaur creature, albeit one that doesn't live in the time of the dinosaurs. It in fact lived after the dinosaurs. This is Basilosaurus. The name translates to King Lizard because in 1834 when they found the fossils of Basilosaurus, it was thought to be a giant sea serpent or a marine reptile. But when analyzing the teeth of the skull, it had mammalian-like teeth similar to that of modern toothed whales. After learning that, they found out that Basilosaurus was actually a primitive whale, not a sea serpent. They thought about changing the name to Zooglodon, which means yolk tooth, but according to the rules of zoological nomenclature, they have to stick to the name Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus lived during the Eocene period in what is now the Sahara Desert, about 41 million years ago. And believe it or not, back then, the Sahara Desert used to be a large mangrove swamp with a large sea. But as time passed, the sea closes up and dries up and becomes the hottest desert we know today. Basilosaurus was the largest animal during the time period, measuring up to 66 feet long 
and was the top predator of the Eocene seas. Now for my drawing, I drew inspiration from the BBC's documentary called Walking with Beast where it showed a Basilosaurus. I love the design of it, so this is another tribute to the BBC's Walking with trilogy. So here is my Basilosaurus. The last dinosaur for this week is the famous Triceratops. These medium-sized herbivores lived in what is now North America during the late Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. And it was one of the very last non-avian dinosaurs that lived before the KT extinction, when the large asteroid came in and wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. The name translates to tree horn face due to the two large horns above its brow and a short one on the end of their snout. They also bear a large bony frill and a large bulky four-legged body. Triceratops is one of the most recognizable of all dinosaurs and the best known ceratopsian. It was also one of the largest ceratopsian measuring up to 30 feet long and weigh up to 9 tons. It shared the landscape with other large dinosaurs such as Amontosaurus and its natural predator, the Tyrannosaurus rex, and just like T-Rex, it is one of the most popular and well-known dinosaurs. For my Triceratop, I based its body on the scientific accurate Triceratops, and the coloring is based on a Triceratops shown in another BBC show called Prehistoric Park that featured the great Nigel Marvin. Not only because of the inspiration, but also because we know that Triceratops could have had a brightly colored frill with patterns to attract females and intimidate rival males. So here is our last dinosaur for this week, the Triceratops. And that is all for this week's Die November. I hope you all enjoyed it. Follow me on my Instagram to see all the artwork I've drawn as well as the previous Die November dinosaurs. Let me know in the comments which of these creatures in this video is your favorite. For me, I would say my favorite is the Bestlosaurus or the Neurotenic Spinosaurus. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos. My name is Nick Raptor, and have a Jurassic day.